All right, so um, that's what we're going to start looking at. We're going to look at how we can the energy transfers from the system to the surroundings, vice versa, no matter what. Okay. All right, so now we know, we've been talking about how energy can transfer from the system. I also need a better way to go between colors and erasers. i got to look into that. Okay. So we know we can go from the system to the surroundings. All right. Energy can go from the system to the surroundings or from the surroundings to the system. It can happen. Yesterday, we briefly mentioned that the two ways that energy can be transferred are via heat and work and or work. Okay. And so that is another um, piece of the puzzle we want to put in. So we can transfer energy from the system to the surroundings via heat, which we abbreviate as Q, the lowercase q. Alright, so we can go transfer heat from the system to the surroundings or vice versa. Or we can transfer energy from the system to the surroundings and vice versa as work. And we transfer, we abbreviate work as W. Sometimes we make sense. Like, <laughs> Like, what should we abbreviate work? W, sure. What should we abbreviate heat? Q. Oh, I like it. I like where your head's at. That's confusing. All right. But we can do both. <laughs> All right. And a lot of times, you're transferring both at the same time. Okay, think about a, uh, your, if you drove to campus today. Okay, you drove your car. All right, your car is doing a lot of work. That, and the uh, combustion of octane and the gasoline does a lot of work. It applies force across a distance to get your car here. When you put your hand on the hood, what's it feel like? Hot. Okay, so you're transferring heat in that uh, um, situation as well. Or even just something as simple as you know me opening the door. Okay, I'm doing work. Okay, I open the door, applying a force across a distance. That's work. Okay. But, of course, there's tiny amounts of friction in the hinges. So I'm transferring heat there. I'm pushing the air that compresses the air. There's friction with the air. That's transferring heat as well. Okay? So a lot of times you have both. Okay? And actually, if you looked and if you measured somehow, some way, the amount of heat transferred and the amount of work transferred and you added them up, since those are the only two ways that you can transfer energy, you know how much energy you transferred. Okay, so that is another way we can actually calculate and determine energy. If you go into lab, measure the heat. Go into the lab, measure the work done. Add them up, you've got your change in internal energy. All right. So we mentioned this with energy, change in energy. The sign tells us a lot. It tells us which way the energy is going. Heat and work are also going to have signs, and they're also going to tell us something, okay, about which way the energy is going. All right? So if delta E for the system was negative, what did that mean? Did that mean the system was losing energy or gaining energy? So if it's losing, it's, uh, so if it's negative, if it's negative, is it losing or gaining? Losing. losing, it's losing energy, okay? So think about final minus initial, 50 minus 100. You start out 100, you're now 50, final minus initial, 50 minus 100, gives you a negative number, okay? So that tells you you lost energy. All right. So if delta E for the system uh, uh, less than zero, negative, the system lost energy. Where'd that go? Where'd that energy go? The to the surroundings. And surroundings gained energy. What about if the change in energy for the system was positive? 
So that means a gain energy or loss energy. Gain. So you start out at 50, you went up to 100, 100 minus 50, that's plus 50. So you gained energy. You went from 50 to 100. So the system gained energy if the change in energy is positive. Where'd that energy come from? The surroundings. So that must be in the surroundings. Lost energy. All right, so we got to think about the same things for heat and work, okay? Sometimes we're just looking at one, okay? So what about if heat uh, is negative, all right, for, well, <coughs> for the system. I'll see, I'll just say system, okay? So if heat is negative, okay, what that means is that, well, what do you think that means? So let's just go there, okay? Does that mean, do you think that means the system is transferring heat to the surroundings? Or the surroundings is transferring energy to the heat to the system? Which way do you think it's going? The heat went to the surroundings. Heat went to the surroundings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where we're going. So I just backtrack it back to the negative, okay? Heat is just a form of energy, a form of transfer of energy. So if the system's internal energy was negative, meant that the system lost energy, that means the same thing for heat. If heat is negative, that means heat was transferred and uh, sy system. system transferred energy to the surroundings via heat. Okay, so we could write it like this. So the system transferred energy to the surroundings via heat. Or the system, in words, we can say the system transferred heat to the surroundings. and the surroundings gained it. All right, what about if Q of the system is positive? <coughs> who, gained this, who gained the heat? Where was heat going to? To the system, okay? Just the same thing as change in internal energy of the system. If change in delta E is positive, system gain energy. So if Q for the system is positive, that means heat was transferred to the system. Okay. And of course, that must mean it came from the surroundings. So surroundings transferred heat to the system. All right, we got to think about work, okay, what the sign of work would be, okay. <laughs> All right, so if work for the system was negative, okay. All right, so which way is the energy going? Is the system, is work going from the system to the surroundings or surroundings to the system? To the surroundings, from the system to the surroundings, okay? Well, just think about this, okay? So if, well, yeah. I'll come up with an example after I write that down. So, yeah, so the system is doing work on the surroundings. All right. 
So if the change in, um, well, is the sign, if work is negative, okay, if the system, if the system's work is negative, and work is going from the system to the surroundings, do you think that the system is losing energy or gaining energy? Losing energy. Okay, so the way we say that is that the system is doing work on the surrounding. So the, uh, so the um, example would be, this would be going back to the door. Okay? I'm opening the door. I'm doing work. If I'm the system, I'm doing work on the door. I'm pushing the force times the distance. Okay? So am I gaining energy or losing energy by opening the door? Losing energy. Okay? And so that's why my sign would be negative. I'm losing energy when I do work. Okay? And so the system is doing work on the system. And therefore losing, oh yeah, that'd be pretty tough. Oh yeah, I'm getting bold. I'm erasing like crazy today. The system is doing work on the surroundings. And so we can say the system is losing energy. All right, so the other one is if, I'll sneak it up here, if work is positive, okay? That means the surroundings is doing work on the system. So work is going from the surroundings to the system. So we say that the surroundings is doing work on the system. And so if the system, if the surroundings are doing work on the system, and work for the system is positive, do you think that the system is gaining energy or losing energy? Gaining energy, okay? So the system is gaining energy in this uh, scenario. Okay. Now this one's, you know, system doing work on its surroundings. That's uh, you know that's a lot of that's very common. Okay, like in a car's engine, the combustion of the gasoline, the octane. If that's my system, the the combustion of the, that so that combustion reaction is doing work on the cylinders inside of the engine and pushing the cylinders forth times the distance. But for the surroundings to do work on the system, uh, the the best examples that I come up with are compressing gases in terms of chemistry and physics. Okay, if you compress a gas and increase the pressure, you can then release that gas and you can do work on the system. Okay? Um, or uh, springs. Springs are a good example. So you push down on a spring, okay, it can then be used to do work. So you're giving that spring energy by pushing it down. You're, going, you're pushing it to a higher potential energy uh, position and then it can do work if you want to. But that's the scenario, okay? You can have positive and negative work, positive and negative heat, positive and negative uh, change in energy. All that does is tell you which way the energy is going, which way the work is being done, which way the heat's being transferred. Now, of course, we could switch all these signs and talk about the surroundings, and that tells you the same information, okay? If the change in internal energy of the system is negative, what's that mean for the surroundings? It's positive, but it tells you the same thing. A positive change in energy for the surroundings tells you the same thing. System lost energy, surroundings gained energy, okay? <coughs> but a lot of times, for whatever reason, we can sort of focus on the system. 